gentlemen to the Carolina Conversation. I'm your host, Shimon Williams, and we're doing the Q&A. Um, the Hills got a great win tonight against Furman University, and uh, it was a close game at first, but uh, the Hills were able to sustain and take advantage of the game in the second half, and they were able to uh, pull out a, a great victory there in Chapel Hill this evening. I'm on this Q&A with my producer uh, and co-host, JK, how you doing this evening? I'm doing good, man. You know, nice coming on here, like 930 Eastern, talking about a little Carolina win. They had me worried in the first half. I cannot lie. <laughs> it's interesting because uh, uh, Furman University is in my hometown, Greenville, South Carolina, and it is also the first place that I coach basketball um uh in 2012 so uh it was quite interesting to, to watch the game uh bob ritchie was a um a colleague of mine at Furman uh while i coached there and he's the head coach at Furman and um does a pretty good job there for the paladins um so you know um it was interesting though interesting game um the achilles hill of the heels uh, is usually three-point shooting and um Furman was able to take advantage of that in the first half. Um, and uh, it was it was it was quite interesting to see if the Hills were going to be able to make that adjustment in the second half, which they made. Um, what were your thoughts? Um, I mean, that was like I kind of knew Furman was going to be like a little fired up because like you kind of talked about, like Bobby Ritchie, he has like the state of North Carolina ties and everything like this is a big game for him. And, you know, they got up for it. And I got worried because they can flat out shoot the basketball. I mean, if you watch them play, like, they can just shoot the basketball. And I think, what did they shoot, like, 61% or something like that in the first half. And I was like, oh, no, here we go again. Heels about to end up winning this game, scoring 96, but giving up 90. And then <laughs> they made the adjustments. I think – Furman only made like two or three threes in the second half and finished the game shooting like 30%. And I think that's been like the biggest difference in my opinion is like they're kind of figuring out their defensive identity. And that's like the big thing that I've noticed from them is these last four or five games, they've just started to give up less and less points. And you and I have talked about it. Like the offense has always been there. Like they, they can score the basketball and mm -hmm. it's like, now they're starting to figure out, you know, the defensive identity. But, like, what did you see in that second half that they did that made such a difference in terms of just shutting Furman down? Well, I think it's attrition. Um, when, you know, a lot of times um, when you play this the game at a high level and you're, you're dealing with shooters, the one thing that you, you have to do is make those guys play defense. And uh, you have to be physical with them. And uh, I thought that the Hills did a great job of being physical um, with those guards. Um, but more importantly, I thought the Hills did a great job of being physical on the interior. Once again, Armando Baco uh, really took over this game um, defensively as well as offensively. And just just being that 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 big uh, enforcer um, um, for the Hills. And I think it, it really pays dividends um, when he's able to do those things um, offensively as well as defensively. And so what I, I thought what, what, what the change was in keeping them from being efficient um, in the second half, because they shot threes, they just didn't make them, um, is, is, you know, the one thing that you do for, to shooters is you make them guard and you attack them and uh, you make them use those legs. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, when they need to make those shots, um, they will be. Uh, they won't be able to do it, and so I, I thought that for me um, was just the you know the old school basketball uh, understanding. Attack the shooters, be physical with them, bang them on the board, you know, uh, attack the glass, you know, make them use that energy and that those legs to do these things, do all those things, and uh, it will make uh, shooting a lot more difficult for them. Um, at the end of the game. Yeah, so, you know, they did a really good job of that. Like like you said, Furman was still shooting them, but they just didn't have the energy to really produce like they did in the first half. But, you know, mm -hmm. 
North Carolina did what they're supposed to do the last two games. They took care of business against Elon, took care of business against Furman, and now they get the ultimate test on Saturday. They got to play UCLA, the blue blood on blue blood. You know, defenses look good, but how do you deal – with, you know, you play two mid-major schools, and then now next thing you know, you're playing against UCLA, Johnny Juzang, Hawkes, you know. Do you think that's going to be a difficult turnaround for them, or do you think it's maybe easier to prepare because you got some wins under your belt? Well, it's it's interesting. That's a great question. Um, I think it's all about how, do you, how you prepare. Um, I will say this, um, not knowing, uh, you know, how Hubert prepares and and how they do things. The one thing that that I know um, about the game and the way that we prepared, we didn't prepare for the teams that we were playing. We had the things that we did. We had uh, a certain level of of expectation for ourselves each and every day we practiced. And regardless of if we were playing an Elon or we were playing a Duke, our our preparation and our emphasis on things were, you know, the, the same. You know, we continuously pushed ourselves. We continuously worked hard. Uh, we continuously kept the same type of mental focus um, as, you know, if we were playing, um, you know, like I said, the, our biggest rival or somebody that most people would have thought that uh, wasn't on our level. It really didn't matter. It was all about us. So hopefully, um, you know, the Hills have that same mentality um, in, in their preparation. Uh, you know, it's about us. It's not about them. It's about us. And we have to continue getting better each and every day. And um, having that mindset, mindset, having that work ethic and that mentality, I think, benefits you regardless of whom they're playing. Yeah. And I mean, kind of my last thing is like, I'm excited to see what happens on Saturday because I do think, like, regardless of the opponent, like you said, they've just been playing good basketball. Like, bottom line, they've just been playing good basketball. And, you know, Saturday's their test. It's kind of their chance to go in there and prove, like, you know what, like, you guys have left us out of the rankings after a big win against Michigan. Like, we're 8-2. and two, We're a good team. And I really think they're going to come out fired up. And yeah, I think they have a good chance to put up at least a really good fight against UCLA. And, you know, saying that, what do you think, like, the couple key things that they need to do on Saturday in order to come in and pull off this upset? Because, like you said, preparation is key. But then again, when you're playing a team like a UCLA, like, you have to execute no matter what. So what do you think they need to do to win that game? Well, um, I think that you defensively, you know, you're probably going to be looking at some more talented players um, than you faced in the past two games. Um, and so with that being said, you know, you're going to have to prepare. You're going to have to be mentally focused. You're going to have to know what those guys um, prefer to do in certain um, positions on the floor. Um, I think, um, def you know, also defensively, uh, you have to limit them to one, one possession, um, you know, per shot. Um, you can't allow them the offensive rebound um, because they're going to offensive rebound as well. Um, and you're going to have to communicate on the ball screens. Uh, you know, they, they, they do a great job of, of running ball screens. Um, they're a fluid team. Uh, they attack from multiple position, um, positions on the, on the floor. Um, so, you know, everybody's going to have to be in tune um, to guard that man one-on-one, -on -one, but also be in a position to help defensively. Uh, you know, UCLA is a, is a, is a well-coached team. Um, you know, they're a tough team as well, having Mick Cronin as the head coach. Um, so, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be, um, you know, up for the com um, the competition, um, they're battle tested, um, and and they're physical as well in their own right. So, you know, it's it's going to be a great test uh, for the heels. I mean, two story programs in college basketball playing against one another, um, and so you know there's there's going to be some, um, you know, some it's not rivalry, but there's going to be a lot on the line when you talk about the two 
programs, uh, UCLA and the University of North Carolina. So I anticipate it being a, a, a great game. I anticipate it, to, you know, being physical. But um, I think that, you know, you'll see um, from both teams, I think you'll be able to see guys that are, are capable of playing at the next level um, because you have so many high caliber players participating in this matchup. Yeah, and I mean, that's really all I got for you. You know, good discussion as always. You know, the only thing I really got to say is let's just hope the Heels can pull off this upset on Saturday so we got something real good to talk about next week. No question, no question. And uh, for those that are, are, are watching the Carolina Conversation, we appreciate you, um, you know, your participation. Um, and when you're not watching the Hills, uh, please watch the Old Dominion women's basketball team uh, led by Delisha Milton Jones. Uh, the team is 10 and two right now um, and, and fighting for two more wins before the holiday break. Um, but also, if you're listening, next we have one of Carolina's greats, my young brother, David Noel, uh, North Carolina's finest, but also uh, 2005 national champion at the University of North Carolina. So please stay in tune for the podcast with David Noel. Thank you all for participating and we'll be talking to you. Thanks. Before we move on, let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet River Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up for Bet Rivers yet, now is the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their rush pay instant approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, it's more secure, and it's more reliable. Now that basketball season is tipping off, get in on the action at betrivers.com today or by downloading the BetRivers iOS app. You must be 21 years or older. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. And while I got you here, Let's talk about the Field of 68 Media Network, where college basketball matters most all year round. This is a digital media and podcast network that we've been building over the course of the last year. We have shows hosted by some of your favorite players covering the program that they love the most. AJ Guyton hosts the House of Hoosier. Eric Devendorf covers Syracuse on the scorer's table. Dan Dickow hosts the Gonzaga Bulldog broadcast. We have Florida's Patrick Young and Duke's Andre Dawkins, and North Carolina's Shimon Williams, and Michigan's Stu Douglas, and Illinois' Deion Thomas. The list goes on and on and on. We have more than 30 shows right now. So hit the links below and check them all out. And while you're at it, make sure that you go check out the Field of 12 Media Network, your home for college football. And we have a dandy with us today. One of my, one of my young brothers, he's, he's a great individual. But he hails from Durham, North Carolina. He was a part of the 2005 National Championship basketball team, former NBA basketball player, the, the, the Kappa himself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's please welcome the David Noel. My man, I so appreciate you having me, Mark. What's going yeah. on, brother? Man, ain't nothing. Nothing's going on, man. Uh, uh, I appreciate you taking the time from your busy schedule uh, to participate here in the Carolina Conversation. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people uh, don't get to, to see you guys um, and get to experience what you're doing in these days. So we're going to talk about that um, and, and let people really just get a chance to, to interject and, and listen to, you know, the David Noel that I know. You're you know, right, the right, great, right. the great, the great person that I know. So, uh, so more importantly, man, how are things? How are you doing? Good, man. Good. Um, I'm back in DC this year, coaching yes. with the Capital City Go Go. Um, we started our season, so uh, we just had a trip, a road trip. We just got back from Toronto uh, last night. So, yes. Um, but it's been a it's been a quick start to the season. Um, we're working, getting better. Guys are starting to buy in, and, and the basketball is looking a lot better. So i um, excited about that, excited about uh, the possibilities here in D.C. with the Capital City Go-Go, also the Washington Wizards. Um, so uh, I, I'm excited, man. Yeah. So um, let's, let's, let's um, talk about that a little bit. 
how is it coaching, you know, the professionals? A lot of people don't get an opportunity to coach professionals or be in that environment. So, uh-huh. you know, someone of your magnitude that has been a, a great college player, been part of championship teams, been the NBA basketball player yourself and has played, you know, extensive years as a professional. Mm-hmm. Um, how is it coaching these young professionals for yourself? Yeah. Man, the crazy part about it, man, it's a pleasant surprise. At first, I ain't gonna lie to you, Ma, I was nervous. I was nervous about coming to this level because when you get um, when you get guys who who know the game, who are very intelligent, especially at this level, that the basketball IQ has to be through the through the roof in order for you to play in the NBA and the G League. Um, and so I was a little bit nervous at first, not not necessarily in in my abilities as a coach, but more so in how I would be uh, how 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 they would receive my messaging sometimes. Uh, And honestly, man, I can I can honestly say these guys are very coachable, bro. And it's and it's been a a pleasant surprise. Um, Now, you you have your times where there's a little back and forth and all that kind of stuff. But uh, but for the most part, man, these guys buy in. They, 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 they listen. They're very coachable. They, they want to get better on a daily basis. Even the guys that are, you know, are, are at, at your top of the top, your creme de la creme, so to speak. But um, each, each and every day, these guys are willing to get better. And, and for me, that was a pleasant surprise to come into this level and see that type of talent being that coachable on, on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's interesting. That's interesting because there's, there's, you know, you can, you can have different types of experiences with, Mm -hmm. with professionals. So that's a, that's, 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 that's a great thing to know. Now, also you, you just said to us that you just finished traveling to Toronto. Mm -hmm. And so could you explain to us how the travel was, especially with the COVID measures and then traveling outside of the country because yeah, Toronto does have an NBA basketball team, quote unquote, yeah. but it is actually another country. So how was that? How was the travel for, for you as a team um, the past few days? Uh, it was hectic, <laughs> to say the least. A lot, of, a lot of paperwork, a lot of pull your mask up, a lot of, <laughs> a yeah. lot of those type of things where, um, you know, in different countries, they're, they're in different spaces. Uh, when it comes to COVID-19 and, and, and for us. So we had to test before we went. Everybody had to come back with a negative test. Uh, we had to test 24 hours within the time that we went. We had to fill out uh, declarations and, and, and uh, documentation for, for our visit uh, to get into uh, Canada and Toronto. Uh, right. And then once we got there, we had to test again um, to make sure that we didn't travel on a plane or whatever the case may be. Uh, so it, to say the, to say the least, it was very very hectic. But once once we got through all of that, we spent a couple of days in Toronto. Um, we played we played the nine oh five. That right. I would say it was on that Friday. No, that's a lie. It was Saturday. We played them on that on that on that Saturday. Yes, and then we went to the Wizards game because the Wizards actually were up there at the same time that we were there. And they okay. play, they played Toronto in Toronto, so we got our guys together. Uh, our, our GM Amber Nichols put it together where they uh, where we got a, a suite during the game. Uh, so so our guys, you know, we have we have two ways and assignments, but the the regular G League guys and Exhibit Ten guys who are who who are are like wishing and and hoping to be on that level one day, they got a right. chance to see it. And on the road, you know what I mean? Like they go to Wizards games all the time, but to see the atmosphere on the road and Toronto fans were, they, they were amazing. Um, and, and Toronto ended up playing really, really well that game. So the, so the, so the Wizards ended up losing, but um, it, it was a great experience overall. And then we got to play in Scotiabank Arena against the 905 uh, uh, that, that following Monday. And then right. we came back. Uh, it was a kids game. Pack they they pretty they I don't want to say they packed out the gym but we had about four thousand uh, uh, fans which is a little bit different for the G League like some some places you go to they pack it out some places you go to is dead but uh, for the nine oh five in Toronto they 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 packed it out so it was a heck of a game we ended up dropping that one so we split one and one but uh, but overall man great experience we we were able to get back here safely 
uh, with no no positive tests and all that kind of stuff. So they're they're definitely doing a great job of of handling this type of season and and COVID nineteen at the same time. So um, it's a lot, but at the end of the day, kind of glad to be somewhat back to normal when it comes to basketball. Right, 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 right. Um, it, it was great to uh, to hear about that because a lot of us don't have the chance to travel travel internationally, um, you know, at this point in time with the COVID. And so it's, it's very interesting to see uh, the stipulations that are placed upon, you know, the NBA um, and, the, and, and, and the G League and, and how they're, they're able to do these things. And so uh, that was great information for us. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. So, so now we're going to go back in time, man. Let's go back to – Let's go back to 2001, 2002, when there was a two, a great two sport athlete um, hailing at Southern uh, High School that, that could have went many places to play football and play basketball. What made the young David Noel choose the University of North Carolina? Man, the crazy part about it is, man, I, I've told this story a lot. And so, like, the people listening may have heard this before, but honestly, man, when I when I got – so I took I took my visit. I took my visit, visit to North Carolina. I only took two visits for football. So, right. mind you, I had um, – um, I had many offers in football. Uh, it came down to North Carolina and Duke uh, because I knew I didn't want to go far from home. I knew that right. that wasn't something that I wanted to do. Like, I, I had offers from – Michigan and like other places like that, that I, that I knew I just didn't want to go too far from home. Right. Um, so we, we, we nipped that in the bud right, right there. Um, and so when I took my visit to Duke, um, you know, it was fun. It, it, it felt, it felt like home, um, but it felt too close to home. And so mm -hmm. when I took my visit to North Carolina, man, it felt like I was on, I was miles and miles away, but really only eight miles down the road. And right. so that feeling gave me a sense of being far away from home, but being close at the same time. And when I got that feeling, I just knew North Carolina was the place for me. And so I, I ended up committing because, again, North Carolina and Duke, they, they also had the tradition of allowing their football players to play basketball. And so right. what I wanted to do was go and be a two sport athlete. Um, and then, you know, my, my senior year basketball wise ended up happening and Coach Doherty, uh, Coach Quarterbaum first. Um, they, they were actually there to recruit one of my high school teammates by the name of Anthony King. He ended up going, going to the University of Miami and then having a, a long career overseas. But uh, he, he was a big man, really talented. Um, and But I, I, I kind of shined. I, I, I did my thing that entire year uh, basketball-wise, ended up winning player of the year and stuff like that. And Coach Q was like, hey, yeah, we know you want to do, uh, you know, the football thing, but I'm, you know, I'm gonna have Coach Doherty come talk to you. And so Coach Doherty came to the to the following game. Uh, didn't play as well as I did the first game, uh, but nonetheless played well. Um, and Coach Doherty was like, "Hey, man, what do you think about, you know, just playing basketball at the University of North Carolina?" And and I was like. Absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm cool with that. Like, yeah. yeah. North Carolina, we talking about. Like, and again, like, again, people know this story. I was a Duke fan at the time, but still, I, I didn't care. Hey, hey, yeah, let's go. We can do this. Uh, right. And I had been following both programs, too, very closely because I knew, I, you know, it was, it, was, it was coming down to those two. So I, I was following them basketball and football wise. Um, and so I knew the class they had coming in. And so that's that's what sparked the question for me to say, hey, OK, like I know y'all kind of deep this year. I know y'all had some y'all had some transfers, but do y'all have a scholarship. <laughs> and so that's right. that's what it came. He was like, ah, nah, we ain't got that. We would ask you to walk on your first year. Uh, and, you know, at that point, I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. My mom yeah. got that kind of money. I know we ain't got that. <laughs> we ain't got that. Right. So so uh, but my sister. Uh, like and and, and I I, I kind of praise my sister to this day um, for helping me through that process. My my sister Sharika Stanley is ten years older than me, so she had mm -hmm. already been through the college process. She had already done 
student loans and, and FAFSA and uh, financial aid and all that kind of stuff. So uh, she walked me through the process of, hey, this is what it would look like if you were to walk on and if they're promising you a scholarship, you know, your sophomore year, then this is all you have to pay back if that kind of deal. And so when we went through the process, man, we, we prayed about it, we talked about it. Uh, you know, I, I promised my mama I won't gonna have her in debt kind of deal, even more than what we already were. So right. she was just like, she was like, all right, if you want to do it, let's do it. And, you know, I made the decision a week before I was supposed to sign my national letter of intent to go to the University of North Carolina and play basketball. And so when 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 I called Coach Browning uh, and, and Coach Bunton and told them, they were sick, man. Like to this day, like to this day, Coach Button has never spoken a word to me. Like even <laughs> while I was on campus, I used to right. see that man and be like, "Coach, what's going on, man?" He'd be like, and just turn and walk away. I, <laughs> I was like, man, I, I used to feel bad, but at the end of the day, I felt like I had to do what was best for me. Um, sure. And, and and to and to kind of know that at, at that age um, was it was was I, I would say yeah all God, because, you know, you make decisions. And that, that was, that was a huge decision at the time because sure. Sure. Playing, playing football for most people in their mind and sh even in mine was, was a one-way ticket to the NFL. Like, you know what I mean? Like big yes. money, all that kind of stuff. And so like that, that was a tough decision to, to turn down like football to play basketball, which was so uncertain, like six, five, 235, they come a dime a dozen in basketball and football. That's a little bit of a different monster right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They for sure. the, yeah. So, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was a tough decision, but at the end of the day, I felt like it was the right decision and, and, you know, got a chance to meet guys like you who, who have, who have imparted on, on, on my life, like tremendously. So like, I, I, I always say it, it was, it was, it was the right decision for me. Yeah. Yeah. It most definitely was the right decision. But like you said, it was a difficult decision as well. And uh, to be honest, Dave, like I didn't I didn't know that. I didn't know that uh, like your first year, you know, that you paid your way and stuff like that. Like like uh, now that you tell me that, you know me, I got to go see Coach Williams. <laughs> I got to see somebody. Hey, we got to get that money back. <laughs> yeah, coach, so coach, coach. And, and, that, and so that's another point because, you know, because I came in under Matt Doherty and yes. Matt Doherty had promised me the scholarship my sophomore year, but then he gets fired. That's right. Like after I, after my freshman year. So I'm sitting there nervous as heck and I'm right. like, Lord have mercy, man, this man, they done let this man go. Like, what am I going to do now? Like, I don't know if I can go back and play play football because Button ain't speaking to me. <laughs> right. Right. Like, right. Like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Like, you know, I had uh, the only team that kept basketball wise that kept recruiting me uh, even after I committed was was uh, was Clemson. So that ran through my head. OK, maybe I'll transfer to Clemson. Like all of those, all of these thoughts start running through my through my mind. And then once they right. named those Williams as the coach, it was like, hey, man, you know, Raymond Felton stepped up for me. My, my brother, my, my roommate at the time. Yeah. And that was the first question he asked, like, hey is David Noel going to get a scholarship next year? And Coach Williams was like, we're definitely going to honor that. And so like that, but man, when I say the weight of the world fell off my shoulders at that point right. in time, like Good I was question. like, oh my goodness, I appreciated it. And, and like, even when Coach Williams, Williams retired, uh, that was one of the first things I hit him with, man. I said, I like everything that I'm going to say to you is going to end in thank you just simply because of you taking a chance on me in 2003, 2004, that season, propelled me to who I am today. And, and, and I can't thank him enough. I can't thank right. Ray enough. I can't thank the Carolina family enough. Um, so like when I go back and speak at, at like, you know, Rams club and, and, and events and all that kind of stuff, I tell people like, I, I knew the dollar amount right. <laughs> to how much it cost to go to, go to this <laughs> university because I had to pay every dime of that back. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, so right. When it, when, it, when it boils down to it, man, to understand what those donors are doing for, for student athletes everywhere, man, we can't thank those guys enough, man. And so, again, I, I thank them every single chance that I get, man, and, and appreciated my time at the University of North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so tell me this now. I mean, 
you're you're kind of you know different than most than the majority of the people that have played at the University of North Carolina, being from Durham, being mm -hmm. so close to the institution, and growing up like you said before, you you grew up a you know liking the the the, the Blue Devils um, just as you know more than you like the Tar Heels, mm -hmm. and so having that you know that ebb and flow throughout those years and you know, and wanting to, you know, liking Duke and then choosing to go to the University of North Carolina. Um, how was it for you when you first actually got on campus? That summer you came for summer school and you walked in and it was time to, you know, you're a Tar Heel now. How mm -hmm. was that whole experience for you? Like, it, it was, so again, like I told you, like, I felt like I was in a different world. Like right. North Carolina was was foreign to me, like as far as the campus, how it looked, um, like just 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 the people that we were we were around. Like I like I had never been a part of that in my life. So like I'm like, OK, you know what? This this is a little different. And I like it. I like it a lot. And so when I first got to North Carolina, I was still like I was on my visit, like because they played Duke on my on my football visit visit. They played Duke. And, and you know, the year before. North Carolina, they was going through some struggles. They were, that was the eight and 20 year. So right. I'm on my Carolina football visit cheering for Duke like a mug. Like, <laughs> I'm in that stands going crazy. But, uh, right. but after that, um, once we got to campus that summer, uh, I met the guys, met Ray. Um, everything just kind of clicked. Being on the court, again, meeting you guys, some of the older guys coming back. I was like, yo, this is like, this is different. Like, this is dope. Mm -hmm. And so they they took us to get our one card. I remember this day vividly. We took the picture for our one card. I get my one card. And on that day, I said, well, I'm officially a Tar Heel now. And, and from that day forward, I've, I've ridden for Carolina <laughs> like I used to ride for Duke. So all of this, all like my social media posts, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. We had social media back then. <laughs> Y'all have saw me ride for Duke like I ride for North Carolina today, but that's how that's how much of a fan I was. But at the end of the day, you know, we got to see the light, and I'm glad I made the switch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no question. Now, how was the, you know, like there it is, you're leaving Southern and high school, and now you're coming to Chapel Hill and in the summertime, and you're getting ready, you know, to to start classes, summer school classes, and and can you explain to the people how the basketball was for you? So the biggest thing for me was I, I needed to prove to myself that I belonged here. Mm -hmm. And so once we got there, now mind you, like I had, I had played against Raymond in, in, uh, in AAU. Um, so I, so I, I, I knew him a little bit. Now I, I don't want to say I knew him. I knew his game. Right. Um, and I had watched him highlights, all that kind of stuff. Um, I knew Rashad. I had played against Rashad often, like him mm -hmm. being from Asheville. We had met in in a bunch of AAU tournaments, uh, a bunch of championship games against him and Trent Strickland, who ended up going to Wake Forest um, mm -hmm. out of that Asheville area. Um, and so the guys that I didn't know, uh, you know, I just, you know, I'm I'm gonna be me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know, acclimate myself the way that I feel like I need to acclimate myself, especially on the court, and that's just right. work. Bro, let's let's get to work. And so when I got there, like, you know, I was I was very athletic. So mm -hmm. I, I was trying to punch on everybody I, I, I saw. And so and so now, OK, I'll, I'll make that my staple. And then the rest of the rest of my game will kind of slowly but surely come to form. Yeah. Everything started to come to form. But my jump shot, man, my jump shot just wasn't it just didn't it didn't transfer as fast as I wanted it to. Uh, from from high school to college, and mm -hmm. so that kind of took a took a little bit of time. Uh, but but slowly but surely, I started to get in the gym, started to work on my jump shot. But but first and foremost, I needed to let these jokers know that a hey, I definitely belong here. I know I'm a walk yeah. right now, but I definitely belong here, and I and I think I kind of did that rather quickly. Yeah, you did. I mean, because nobody knew that you were walk on. I mean, <laughs> like you say, I just found that out today, and I've known you. I've known, I've known you for for years. Right. I never knew that. But, but, yeah, but I'm gonna tell you, 
it does make sense now because I remember the fresh. I just say, why he just didn't lay that up? Because <laughs> sure, sure enough, you was trying to duck it. Yeah. You know, like I said, yeah. I said nah, he could have just laid that up. <laughs> but but now I understand what you were doing. I mean, you know, it it it, it makes all the sense in the world. It yeah. makes all the sense in the world. So you know, so uh, elude. And talk to us about you know the freshman year, the freshman year there at the University of North Carolina. Um, man, my freshman year was like a whirlwind, man, because you know we 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 start, um, midnight madness happens. Uh, the blue white game was like I I balled out in the blue white game, like yes. I had like twenty three and fifteen or something crazy. So I'm mm. like, yo, this college thing ain't that bad, like. <laughs> I'm all right, you know what I mean. So, yeah. but then we get to the season, and 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 you know, I, I I don't I don't start, so I'm not playing as much at the beginning. But slowly but surely, like me, I've I've never been the guy to complain about playing time or you know anything like that. Like me personally, I always look in the mirror first and say, all right, you know what what can we do to to change the mind of coaches? What can we do to make sure to ensure that we, we start getting a little bit more playing time. And, and for me, right. that, started in, that started in practice, all right? Let's, let's, try to be, let's try to be a dog in practice. Let's try to be first in the sprints. Let's try to be, let's try to defend at the highest level. Let's try to, let's try to shut down a Rashad McCants. Let's try to shut down a Raymond Felton. Let's, let's try to be better than whoever it is that got you compared to, like on this team. And so, that's 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 the way that it started for me. And so uh, beginning of the season, didn't get a lot of playing time. Uh, but the minutes that I did get, I felt like I, I made the most of them. And then and, and, and a lot of people and this is what I tell a lot of people. Your opportunity may come like at the blink of an eye when you don't even know it. Right. It's your job just to be ready. And so for me. Rashad ended up going down. Sean ended up breaking his foot that year. So now they th they throw me. It didn't matter what spot they threw me in. Just put me on the floor. I was playing the five. Like right. a lot of people don't remember that. I was playing the five. Like at six five two thirty, I'm out there playing the five, banging against Sheldon Williams, banging against right. all of these bigs, but banging against Eric Williams, like banging against all of these bigs throughout the ACC. But at the end of the day, I was uh, the opportunity presented itself for me, and so I just wanted to take full advantage of it, and 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 ended up ended up having a pretty good freshman year. I remember a stretch where I was averaging about fifteen. Like I I, I hit Wake for fourteen. I hit Maryland for something, and then I, I then 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 I went to Cameron for the first time as a Tar Heel and hit mm -hmm. him for nineteen. Like I I was dunked on Casey Sanders, like again, mm -hmm. it was, for me, it was this, this whirlwind. I was just so happy to be there and, and Coach Doherty giving me the opportunity. And then all of that kind of came crashing down towards the end of the season when we realized we weren't going to make the NCAA tournament. Uh, and then of course the subsequent actions of, you know, Coach Doherty getting let and go. And so, getting right. go. And so now it's like, ooh, so, but again, it, the, the freshman year was, 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 was dope for real. Yeah. Very productive. You had a great, a very productive freshman year. And so that, that was awesome. And, and you spoke about it earlier and you just talked about it, you know, being a, a freshman and having such a, you know, a, a pretty good season and then having your head coach let go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how was it, you know, when when Coach Williams came in for you? Um, you know, how, how was that? How was that? I wouldn't say the process, but you know, just changing or, 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 you know, trying to develop a relationship with them. How was that for you? Um, it was difficult at first. And, and here, and some of that was on me. And here's why it was on me. Cause we remember earlier in the year, we had played Kansas in the, in the preseason NIT my freshman year. So right. My freshman year, we beat Kansas in the preseason NIT coach Doherty, coach Doherty knowing what coach Williams was going to do because we ran the same stuff. He put in like a special offense just for that game. And he lifted everybody up. We were, we were almost like, like a two, three above the free throw line. We would hit the post and back door, bang. And we were frying them all night. Coach Williams was going crazy <laughs> on the sideline, bro. So I'm yeah. running back on defense. Like I'm talking about, he going ham. Hey, I'm like, bro, I don't never want to play for that dude. <laughs> I said, bro, he crazy. 
Man, and sure enough, man, as luck has it, this man becomes our coach. So I'm like, yo, like, so I'm like, all right, all right, all right, let's see, let's see what happens. And and so they get there. Uh the the whole, you know, uh coaching change happens. Uh Coach Williams comes in, he has a meeting with us. Uh again, Raymond asks the question. So again, weight of the world falls off of my shoulder just knowing that he's gonna, you know, provide me a scholarship nonetheless. Um, and so again, I went into again, okay, I gotta prove myself again mode. You know, what right. I, mean? I, I had I, I had felt like I had proven myself to my teammates, um, and I had proven myself to the previous coaching staff, but now I gotta do it all over again. And so um and, and that was happening, but then I had a snag because I tore a ligament in my thumb uh, my sophomore year and was out for, for six mm -hmm. to eight weeks at the beginning of the season. Um, but, you know, that, that, that threw a little bit of a snag in it. But once I got back, uh, I really wasn't the same. I really couldn't catch the ball like my, like my, and it was my right hand. So mm -hmm. it was, it was my shooting hand. So that, that entire year, I was, I was kind of up and down, up and down, up and down, had some good moments, had some bad moments, had some good moments, had some bad moments. Um, but then at the end of the day, ended up, it, ended, it ended up turning around, uh, you know, a few years later, well, the next year, honestly, because we, we, we ended up winning the championship that next year. Right, 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 right. And so, you know, let's, let's talk about that junior year, you know, uh, having, you know, having a solid sophomore campaign um but you know having it be uh up and down because of the injury mm -hmm. um but now you're going into your junior year you know i remember that summer you know being around you guys and and you know we we we, we did a few things and you know had a, had a pretty good summer mm -hmm. um you know I, I remember you know like that summer it was like these guys really had yeah they they were different they were a little bit different, mm -hmm. you know. We were, you know, you were you you guys were more, more together mm -hmm. that that year, and and um, you know, just just allude to us, you know, what you thought happened going into that junior year, and talk about that junior year and and winning the national championship. And so, so like like you said, man, like, like that summer coming off of we had just made the NCAA tournament for the first time um in, in a couple years um we had all shaved our heads like to become this unit and, and we ended up dropping that game against texas but that that summer like guys were locked in like like guys started holding each other accountable there was no more like there was no more window for bs like and, right. and that's and i think that was the switch that happened so it was no longer this Oh yeah, we're just happy to be here. We're at the University of North Carolina. It was all right, man. It's time to prove something. We got a team, and then and then the addition of Marvin Williams and Quentin Thomas. Um, Marvin Williams came in as the number two recruit in the nation and worked his butt off. Like I had never seen talent that much talent work that hard now mind you don't I, I, and that's that's not a slight to like guys like yeah, anybody else you know what i'm saying but, yeah. but like marv came in at, 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 at 17 years old came in with the mentality of bro i gotta get this done ain't nobody gonna outwork me and, right. and he got it done and and he never started a game at the university of north carolina but just that switch in him uh i think raised the level of of everybody else to be better um, now, mind you, we were, we were, we already had the mindset, but for him to come in and plug himself in that seamlessly, as well as Quentin Thomas, um, it was, it was, it was phenomenal to watch. And then to watch our growth throughout the summer, different guys getting better and better and better, uh, guys understanding their roles, uh, mm -hmm. guys even taking a step back, like and saying, all right, I may not need to do this this year. I'm going to do this guys like Jack Emanuel, mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the 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 step back that he took his senior year to integrate himself into that team the way that he did to do exactly what we needed him to do was 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 by far phenomenal. And so to 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 watch our team mature that way, um, starting in the summer, going into the the preseason, 
guys worked their butt off. Uh, no, no phantom injuries happened. No, no, no right. things like that. You know, nobody, nobody took the shortcut this summer, this preseason. And it was like, okay, all right, let's see what we got. And did we know that was going to turn into a national championship? Absolutely not. But the way that we were working, we, we were, we were working for something bigger than ourselves that year. I, I would say that wholeheartedly. So um, and then as the year progresses, we, we lost four games that year. And I really do. And I really will say that I think those four games uh, kind of taught us something at every single loss. So the loss at, at Santa Clara, when we just didn't pay attention to the freaking scouting report. Yeah, we didn't have Raymond Felton, but we still had more than enough to be able to beat Santa Clara. But they whooped our butt that game, um, not paying attention to the scouting report, little things like that. Um, and then we ended up losing to Duke, the, the, the one at, one at their crib, which was, which was, which was a tough one. Um, but then like the, 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 the win streaks that we had, the different type of styles that we had to play against the different type of teams that we had to beat the good teams, the bad teams, the bad teams, we beat the way that we were supposed to beat them. We beat them by 20, 20 plus the good teams that we were compared against. We ended up beating them by 10 and 15. So, right. so, the, so the dominance in which we were playing and working, uh, it, w- it was special to watch. And then to see that uh, culminate into an ACC regular season championship, we ended up losing to Georgia Tech in the, in the NCAA tournament. And everybody, everybody from the 93 team came up to us and was like, y'all know we didn't win the ACC tournament that year either. So we was like, Okay, all right, cool. Well, we don't need to feel as bad, but we know we now know now it's time to go. And so we ended up, I remember the first practice, Coach Williams took the rims off of the <laughs> off of the, <laughs> off, of the uh, off of the goals in the practice gym. So we walk in the practice gym, there's no baskets. Like what right. the, we're looking around. So every like from so from that practice, we just imagining. We're imagining what we're supposed to be doing. We're imagining the ball going through the rim. And, and it just kind of flowed throughout the year, man. I mean, excuse me, throughout the tournament. And we get a number one seed. We get all the way to St. Louis, matched up with, with Michigan State. Um, we ended up beating them and then on to the national championship game against Illinois. And, like, I, I knew, you know, how sometimes you have, like, superstitions, uh, like, throughout the year in basketball and all that kind of stuff. So uh-huh. – we had never lost in our white jerseys. And, and, and like, I knew that going in. And so Illinois was the number one overall team. They chose to wear their orange jerseys as the home team, which put us in our white jerseys. Mm-hmm. I was like, we finna win a national championship. Like, I, I, I just knew it in my head. Like I, I, I said, bro, I, I'm talking to Ray in our room. I said, bro, when I saw that they they switched their jerseys and didn't wear white, because I, I just knew we were going to be in blue. They, when they switched their jerseys and we were in white, I said, bro, we're going to win a national championship. Like, this is crazy. I'm going ham the day before. Like, yeah. I'm happy as heck the day before because I, I kind of felt like it was, you know, everything was lining up. Like, the stars were aligning kind of deal. And, then, and it, man, it was great, man. It was great. That experience was great. Um, you know, proving something to – older generation like yourselves to the the way that we came in and worked and and uh you know just carrying on that Carolina legacy man it it was and to be edged in stone with 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 the great teams like Mm -hmm. of the past like it was it it was phenomenal that junior year was something different yeah man yeah that winning that national championship man for you guys man it was it was uh it was really really awesome it was awesome to see you guys get that I was extremely happy uh, for you guys, because you most definitely deserved it. And, um, you know, it was just, it was, it's always great to see, you know, you guys probably was the closest group that I was, that, you know, I, I had the relationship with, you know, even though I've, you know, I, I got the relationship with all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, no you know, I, it was just like the right age. I was at the right, right. age at the right, right time right. with you guys, man. And it was, it was, it was really, really, it was really, really great to see you guys uh, achieve achieve something that 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 you know eluded myself and some of my teammates. So yeah. it, it it was it was really big. And so and so there it was, David. You know, you won a national championship, uh Coach Williams' first championship. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the first championship for the University of North Carolina in uh, in eight years. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, no, 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 no. Let me get that right. Let me get that right. No, 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 I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm yeah, 13 was, years. Yeah. 13 years. I'm sorry. 13 years. 90, 93 to what? 05. Yeah. 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 93, 93, 13, 12, 13 years. And so, um, you know, there it was after winning that national championship, you had to face a lot of your teammates leaving the University of North Carolina to go on to be professionals. Mm -hmm. And and you um, taking the role as the leader of the team there. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how, how was that transition? So I, I'm going to go tell you this too. Had them jokers not left, I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had told everybody, like, you know, because we did the celebration and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, Sean made the comment, hey, let's come back, do it again, that kind of deal. I said, y'all come back if y'all want to. I'm leaving. Like, I would, I would listen because I knew. So for me, it was like, okay, we've reached the pinnacle. We've won the national championship. Right. Now it was like, okay, Dave, what's next for you? Like, what, right. what's next for you? Like, this, this is right. the first time in my career that I had thought about like me. Like, what, what, what is David Noel gonna do? Right. Um, and so. I knew if they came back, I wouldn't get the opportunity to be on the floor as much as I needed, be, needed to be in order to show what I needed to show in order to get to the next level. Gotcha. I so I said, if they come back, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to coach. I, it might not, I, I think Coach Bunton was gone at the time. I can't even remember who the, who the head coach of the football team was by then. But... Um, I'm, I'm going to the football program and I'm going to ask them, can I play? Mm -hmm. And so I was going to leave and go play football had, had half of them came back. <laughs> I, I knew Marv was gone. I knew Marv. I knew, I, I knew Marv. I knew Wad. I knew Jackie. I knew Melvin was gone. Had Sean, Rashad, and, and, and uh, Raymond came back. I, I was going to play football. I, I'll tell you that now. I was gone. So, so when they made the decision to leave, I said, all right, it's my time now. It's right. my time now. And uh, so I got to work. I got to work. I, I literally, I got in the gym. Uh, one of the things that I knew I needed to show a little bit better than the previous year, my jump shot was starting to come along just a tad bit. Um, I knew I needed to shoot the ball better. So I got in the gym and I, I got up a thousand shots a day, man. A thousand yep. shots a day, like not an exaggeration. Over the summer, I was shooting the basketball a thousand times a day, Monday through Friday. Um, and then every now and then on Saturday, like I, I knew I had to get in my mind that listen, we got to make shots next year. This is the thing. So <clears throat> that turned into me shooting 40% from three. Uh, my senior year, mm -hmm. uh, leading a team uh, full of freshmen. And, and I say full of freshmen, but they were way more mature beyond their years than freshmen. Uh, Rayshon Terry steps up and have a, has a heck of a year. Sure uh, Tyler Hansbro comes in and, and, and becomes Tyler Hansbro. So, and so we got this group of young guys who were um, hungry, ready, we played into the narrative. Even Coach Williams was like, yeah, we're going to play into the narrative that we're young, that we lost 90, what, 7% of our scoring from the year, year before, all of that kind of stuff. I was the only person that scored in the national champion. All of these things that they threw out and why we shouldn't win, we played right. into it. But on the inside, we knew. Like, we knew. We was like, nah, this ain't this, – and me, me specifically – this ain't going to be no eight and 20 year. This ain't going to be no down year for North Carolina. This ain't no transition year. This is a year that a lot of guys are going to be able to prove coaches right for giving them the opportunity to play at the university of North Carolina. And that's what we took that as we, I took it that way. Uh, Ray Sean took it that way. Quentin took it that way. Byron took it that way. Um, and then all of our freshmen just came in and they, and they listened, they listened from day one. 
like Coach Williams always says that I'm like one of the greatest leaders that he's ever had. Um, but that, like that freshman group made it easy for me. Like, right. it easy. Like they followed my lead. And so I, I, I didn't necessarily have to yell a lot. You know, I had to, I had to correct some things like, right. Because, you know, there I'm, I, I'm, I'm four years into this college thing now. So I got a little bit of a gap that I can close for you guys. And, and they, and they listen, they listen. And, and, and it, and it, and it started to click. It started to work. And we go into Cameron and we win. We number three in the, in the, in the NCAA tournament, we, we finished second in the, or third in the ACC line, things that w- were unfathomable, you know, right. going into the season. So, um, and, and for me, it was probably the funnest year I've had at, at North Carolina that senior year. There was some ups and downs, but for sure, it was probably the funnest year, even, even outside of the, of the national championship year, probably the funnest year I had at the University of North Carolina. Right, right, right. And so there it was, you got your opportunity to showcase David Noel and, you know, you, you most definitely ascended so much. You became such a, a great basketball player, um, you know, became a better, better young man for sure. Uh, all of us did at the University of North Carolina. And so there it is. In the you know the 2006 mm-hmm. NBA draft, mm-hmm. um, I know you remember you working out for the draft and taking your visits and things like that. How was that process for you? And then how was the how was the culminating into it being drafted there in that 2006 NBA draft? How was that for you? That thing was nuts, man. Like I probably worked out for. There, if there were, I know the last the last round of thirty, um, I probably worked out for twenty of the teams in the second round, and maybe mm-hmm. I think five in the first round. So I did almost like twenty five workouts, like, right? And I was chasing guys. Like, yeah, because I knew <clears throat> I knew that if I got into a workout uh, with guys, that I would be able to prove myself. Like I, right. I would. I would and so a lot of the guy, anybody that they had above me, slotted above me, your, your Bobby Joneses, your Hassan Adams, your uh, what's my man, Rodney Carneys, all, all Carnegies, all, all of those guys. Like I was chasing Eric James White. I was chasing them guys. Like, hey, hey, I need that workout. Like, I need that workout. Um, like, let, let's let's go man to man. Like, let's go one on one, like whatever. Like, yeah. I, I needed that though. Um only person I got to see was James White, which was unfortunate. Everybody else, their agents told my agent, like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, then I began to see, like, kind of the political side of it. You know what I mean? But the political right. side of basketball, which I, which I had zero idea about at the time. My agent was like, yeah, man, I don't want to work out with you. What you mean? Like, what you mean I don't want to work out with me? Why, would the, why, why not? And so, yeah. you know, my agent started to – to explain little things like that, man. But, um, but that, that process going through it, like I had a, I had a <clears throat> bunch of really good workouts. I had probably like three or four great workouts. Um, so I, I knew my chances were kind of high, but I still wasn't hundred percent sure. Okay. Um, I had worked out, I had worked out with Dallas um, who had the last pick of the first round. No lies. They had 29. They had 29, so not 30. <clears throat> so, but and I and, and in my Dallas workout, I killed it. It was one of uh-huh. my great, it was one of my great workouts. Uh outshot Steve Novak mm-hmm. in that workout. I was I was with him, a uh, couple other guys can't really remember their names. Um, but I, I remember Steve and, and I remember shooting the ball crazy that day. Mm-hmm. And so I felt like if there was a possibility for me to slip into the first round, it would be with Dallas. Um, some 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 movement happened in the first round with New York taking some picks that nobody saw coming. So in the Mo Ager ended up falling to the end of the first round. So he ended up getting picked by Dallas, and then of course I went um, 39th overall to uh, to Milwaukee. And the crazy right. part about it is, like I didn't even know I was getting drafted. So they go to commercial break. There was three teams that 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 said if I was there, they would take me: Milwaukee, Orlando, uh, and Utah. I really wanted to go to Utah. 
Mm -hmm. I was like, man, if I get to Utah, I get a chance to play for Jerry Sloan. Like, I know I'm gonna get, I, I know it's gonna be great. That was another great workout that I had. I had a great workout for Utah and they had a late second round pick. So it was like, you know, like it, I, I was like, all right, that, that'll be safe. Like that, that's safe. So for me, I was thinking I was gonna go late later than I did. Right. Um, Milwaukee in, 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 ends up picking me, um, which, you know, hindsight is 2020, of course. But it, it, it was just a great experience that night uh, hearing my name called. Remember getting your text like you were the, you were probably the second. Here's the crazy part, Ma. You were the second person to text me. Congratulations. And guess the, and the, guess who the third person was? My agent. <laughs> bro you you hit me you hit me before my agent I, and, and, and so here's the story this is how i found out i got drafted man uh, go to commercial break at the 36th pick no right 37th pick bobby jones goes right before me at 38 they come back off a of commercial break for 39 you, there you go yeah i mean so, uh, they come back off a commercial break for 39. My phone goes off. It's Orlando. Orlando says, so I'm assuming that y'all TV was ahead of mine. No, Orlando probably knew, but I'm assuming your TV was ahead of mine. Right. My phone goes off. Orlando says, bro, congratulations, man. Wish you would have failed to us, but we hope you love it in Milwaukee. I'm like, what the? Because I, I went to a hotel and I'm by myself. I wasn't by myself. My best friend, Fabian, Fabian Davis. Fabian, yeah. Yeah, um, Fabian. Was with me. So it's just us two in the hotel. Right. And so I, I turn, I look at the TV. The, the NBA draft is coming back on. You text me. Bro, <laughs> congratulations. I'm like, what the? F and I'm looking with the 39th pick overall, the Milwaukee Bucks select. David know it. <laughs> me and Fabian. <laughs> I'm like, oh! So we get to jumping around, bro. We leave the hotel. Uh, I, I go to my mama crib and I'm talking about just tears of joy. No Happy. question. Like no just, question. A, just a surreal moment, man, to, to see all of your work pay off. Yes. And, and because that's like, I think, I think that's the, that's the toughest thing sometimes when, when you put in so much work and, and it doesn't necessarily come to fruition right away but but then then you have this moment where all of that hard work you put in it comes to uh it comes to a head man and, and for me being drafted in, in in the nba draft um in 2006 was was by far one of the greatest memories i've I'll, I'll, I'll ever had yeah yeah i mean it's 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 just it's just a great story and when you talk about a young man that that bets on himself um, and chooses to go to the University of North Carolina and pays his way, mm. you know, and 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 then to to watch how it all ends. It, you know, it's not the end, but the end of his collegiate career and everything that he's put put on and coming from the environment that you come from mm. and 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 the things that you've experienced and the things that you overcame. Uh, and look, you know, just listen to what you said, the decision that you you were going to make if those guys had come back, mm -hmm. you know, to see, hey, you know what? Look, man, he is one of the best players in the world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, man, just just listening to you right there gave me goosebumps, man. You know, it just, you know, I, you know, you just go back through those those times, man. And it just, uh, you know, it, 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 it solidifies why, you know, why you are David Noel, why mm -hmm. you are the man that you are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and for a lot of kids, you know, I always say this, and I guess that's why, you know, we always see eye to eye on a lot of things because, you know, I always talk about the have and the have nots. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us look, you know, a lot of people look at us at us and they say, we played the University of North Carolina and, 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 and what you're getting to do right now is talk about the production. Mm -hmm. They only get to see the movie. Yeah. They only get to see yeah. the good parts. Right. You know, they don't. They don't see the cuts. You have to do over yeah. and the, 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 the other work that it takes to make that movie great and, and to listen and to see and, you know, for me to be there and, and, and to watch it and, and see where you, you know, what you did and, 
and how it all ended for you, man. It's like, I try to tell the majority of these kids, you know, maybe God has blessed you to be a Raymond Felton or a Jerry Stackhouse mm-hmm. or a Vince Carter or a, a, a Rasheed Wallace. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe that is the case. Right. But what if you're not? What if you what if you are David Noel or mm-hmm. Shimon Williams or Luke mm-hmm. May? You know, what 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 if you're one of those guys? Yeah. But guess what? If you're willing to do the work yeah. and be diligent. Mm-hmm. You can end up the same place as those guys. No end. question. And uh, you know, man, that you know, and that's why you know I, I'm proud of you all. But you know, a lot of us are, a lot of us have different circumstances. Mm-hmm. It's not a crutch, mm-hmm. but it's the different circumstances that the Lord has placed upon us, and and we have, right. and and we use those things to, to you know, I always say. Did you maximize the person that you are? Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, the greatest thing for me with you, David, is you max the you maximize you maximize the person that you are, no that question. you were. And uh, and that that right there, man, is a is 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 a blessing, but it's worth noting and telling you, hey, man, you know. I appreciate you because you, you know, you, you, you are the example that most of these kids in the world need to know and to see. I appreciate that. Definitely. Yeah. That. Yeah. You, you, you're, you're, you're one of those guys, you know, and, and, uh, you know, and, and a lot of times, you know, people look at you, you know, the things that you post and, mm-hmm. and, you know, they'd be like, David, be at it. David, be at it. And I, you know, I always say, yeah, I said, that's when you work at stuff and you earn stuff, yeah. you 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 can say what you feel. Yeah. No question. No <laughs> yeah, question. yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, no, nobody gave him anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and 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 not saying that other people had it easier, not saying that. Mm-hmm. But what I what I do know, what I do know is is that young man is similar to Shimon Williams. And when I say that. He had to get it, as they say now, these kids, yeah. he had to get it out no, of the no mud. <laughs> no question. I tell, I tell jokers that all the time, man. I said, listen, I ain't start from ground zero. I started from underneath that thing. So, that is. so like, I I had to build it up, like, That's right. to get to ground zero. So, That's right. And, 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 and again, man, like, I again, I appreciate everything that you said. And for me, um, I think that's the that's the mentality that I take into coaching now. Mm-hmm. Like, like under, understand this opportunity that you that you have. Like, right. you made it this far. Like, who's to say? Like, at this point in time, right now in your career in your life, who's to say that you can't get there? Like, right. but it's about it's about concentrating on the work, man. If you if you put your head down, concentrate on the work. And you get you continue to get better every single day. Continue to learn this game every single day. I promise you, there's a place for you in this league. And so mm-hmm. now, and then it's just about the opportunity. When when the opportunity presents itself, take full advantage of it. I think mm-hmm. I think a lot of and, and so I can honestly say with our group, with our group here with the Capital City Go Go, we got a bunch of dogs. Mm-hmm. They are a joy to coach because. They 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 try to bring it every single day. You know mm-hmm. I mean, like as a basketball player, you know, like you ain't gonna have hundred percent every day. Like, but if if you got if, if they got eighty, they give it to us. If they got sixty, they give it to us. And so that's that's the piece that I can appreciate about this about this team, about this squad, about about uh, our coaching staff, um, because we 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 try to bring it every single day. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so. What I always do, Dave, is at the end, at the end, I always ask this difficult question. It's okay. a difficult question now. I'm letting you know ahead of time, it's a difficult question. All right. When it's all said and done, mm-hmm. it's all said and done, and the people get together at the University of North Carolina, and they begin going down those lists and they get to your name, David Noel. Mm-hmm. What do you want people to remember 
and know about David Noel? Oh, man, you said it's going to be hard. It's easy. <laughs> Think about it. Oh, no, I've, I've, I've thought about this. I've thought about this question often. And and when when they get to my name, I, I really, I genuinely, all I want them to, 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 to remember me as, as a kid who worked his butt off to make the most of his opportunity. Like, like it, it, it is really that simple, man. Like, like I don't, I don't need to be known as the, the greatest dunker or, or, or the, or the, whatever the best, whatever. Like I I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Like I, I realized the lineage of North Carolina and I, and I realized um, how low I am on that totem pole. And that's, then that's completely fine with me. I promise you. When I, when I, when I say that, I mean, I'm meaning like, when you when you think about the names that have come through the University of North Carolina, now all I all I say is I made them. He worked his butt off and made the most of his opportunity. And so when 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 you when you when you go down that line of Carolina players of 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 guys that that have worn that jersey, just just know I gave it my absolute all. Like when I put that jersey on. Like I promise you, I, I as as much as as much as I played for the name on the front, I played for the name on the back too. Like mm-hmm. I, 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 I'll be honest with that. I, I, I played to say. So when you when you saw the number thirty four, and you thought of your George Lynch's, and you thought of your your J.R. Reeds, you thought of David Noel too. And mm-hmm. so that was that's the. That's the one thing that I that I, I want people to to remember about David Noel is he gave it his absolute all while he had that North Carolina jersey on his on his chest. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, David, you know you you know you know you got a special place in my heart. You know mm-hmm. I, I I love you, man. You know and I you know it's one thing to see you guys and I, I think about it I think about it a lot. Um, it's one thing to see you guys walk on campus. Mm-hmm. When you first get to campus, mm-hmm. then it's another thing to see you guys years later as men. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's what I appreciate more than anything else. Because at one time, you know, when you're coming on campus, you don't know what to do. Right. And so you're leaning on somebody to help you and teach you. Mm-hmm. And the great, the greatest part for me now is I don't have to say nothing. Mm-hmm. You you guys can say it. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like it 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 is like, hey, what whatever David said, that's what you know, that's how it's gonna go. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I'm comfortable, you know, mm-hmm. and, and 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 you know, when you alpha males and you lead, it's hard to give up leadership mm-hmm. to people. But the one thing that I, I never second guess or I have any questions is is knowing when you guys talk. I'm okay to listen. Mm -hmm. I'm okay to follow because I know how you've been built. I know what you stand for. I know what you're about. I know your work ethic. I know you as men. And Mm -hmm. for me, you know, that's, that's the most appreciate, appreciative thing that that I appreciate about all of them. And just, you know, just man, look, you know, see you with your family. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I remember it was just him and Fabian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know what, yeah. I mean? yeah. you know what I mean? So, man, it's, it's you know I mean, I, I, I really appreciate you taking the time. And, um, you know, when I talk to you guys, it get kind of emotional for me because y'all my guys. So, yeah. uh, but, man, you know, I, I just, uh, I'm loving everything that you're doing. And uh, as great as you were, then I know that you're going to be even greater in the future. No. And so, uh, you know, you know, uh, just thank you. No, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate you. Like, I, I know, I appreciate like, you. like you, like you say all of that and you feel comfortable, but bro, it's, it's because of the blueprint that you left. Like, and, and yeah. you were there, you were there to, to not only tell us, but to show us, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, like you said, you, you were at that sweet spot in your career where, like you were teaching us the game and you were showing us how to do it. Like, like, and, and like that's, that's, that, that was probably the most tangible thing that, that we as, as young guys coming in could see, like, like you were there with us, you know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't, it wasn't this, 
uh, yeah, I got a tweet here or a tweet there from Shaman Williams. No, you was on campus with us. Every summer you was working out with us. Every summer you were playing with us. Every summer you were teaching us new phases of the game that translated. So just, so just as much as, as, as we put in the work, like you were there every step of the way, bro. And we and we absolutely appreciate you. When I when I tell you, like the the our, our squad, 2005 or, or 2002 and, and beyond, um, for 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 the guys that I came in with, we understand how much Shamai Williams meant to the growth of each and every one of us on the on the on the not only uh on the basketball court, but as men. And so, bro, we thank you. We love you. Um, appreciate this opportunity to jump on the podcast with you. Um, and, and, and trust me, we'll, we're going to reconnect down the road. Like, is it, is it, no we got some no things question. moving and shaking. So just, no we, we, we don't, we trust me. It's, it's, it's coming, man. I'm, I'm telling you, it's coming. It's all going to come to fruition. I promise you that. Working my tail off as well, man. But David, I want to say thank you, man. And, and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Let's please give another hand to the great day. <laughs> oh, well. Appreciate y'all, man. Definitely appreciate y'all. Participating here on the Carolina Conversation. And those listening, when you're not supporting the Hills and you're not supporting the Capital City Go-Go, make sure you support the Old Dominion women's basketball team led by Delisha Milton-Jones. Yeah. Uh, Great young ladies playing some great basketball, and they, they have a great leader as well. So when you have time, I mean, the Tar Heels, the Capital City Go-Go, and the Old Dominion Women's Monarchs. Let's go. Let's go. And uh, we'll be back with you.